The Surface Pro 11. I've been using it as my daily computer since its release in June. Touch screen, pen input, full operating system, but we'll get into all of that. I'll be honest with you guys, it hasn't been the easiest, but it's transformed over time. And now I'd argue it is probably one of, if not the best Windows device on the market right now. And if you clicked on this video, you're probably interested in what it's like to have as a laptop replacement. And you'll be happy to know that as of filming this right now, it is still my daily computer. But I feel like the best way to share what the experience has been like is to take you along the journey. And it all started back in 2023. So back in 2023, Snapdragon announced their new X processor lineup. And this lineup was a direct result of Qualcomm's acquisition of Nuvia, an X Apple team that was working on an entirely new architecture for PCs. And with that, rumors ramped up in 2024. We started to get a lot of rumors about these new processors and what they would mean for the Windows PC market, which eventually led to the actual event unveiling at Microsoft's headquarters in Washington. This is when Microsoft announced the new wave of Copilot Plus PCs powered by Snapdragon initially because they had a partnership with Snapdragon for exclusivity. At that event, they revealed the Surface Laptop, the new Surface Pro, and a bunch of other new devices from OEMs. And that leads us to today. Microsoft actually sent me the Surface Pro and the Surface Laptop to use. Wasn't sponsored, but they did send it. Told me I could do whatever I want with them. And to be honest, I've been kind of looking forward to this for a while. Here's why. In early 2023, I was using my MacBook Pro and my iPad. One was for my everyday computer and video editing, and one was to edit my photos. Now, I had been wanting a replacement that could do it all, so I turned to the Surface Laptop Studio 2, which was released in late 2023, and I used that for editing photos and videos simultaneously. But I'll be honest with you guys, the Surface Laptop Studio 2 was a nice laptop, but it was heavy, battery life was mediocre, very bulky, and it was powered by the last-gen Intel chip. So here's the thing. The introduction of these new lightweight, long battery life, high powered Windows PCs that came in 2024, it was pretty welcome. Now listen, it wasn't all roses. There was a huge issue that I found along the way and that was video editing, which is kind of my job. Despite DaVinci Resolve being native to these new ARM PCs, I could not for the life of me get smooth video editing. And I did eventually fix this, but it took me a pretty long time to figure out. I spent a lot of time on the road with the new Surface Pro and a lot of headache trying to make it work as an editing computer. For example, I went to an ASUS event in New York and on the way, I tried to update the GPU drivers to beta drivers and it didn't fix the problem. Anytime I load up the timeline and start to stack clips, it starts to stutter a lot, drops a lot of frames. And one thing I noticed is that in the process manager, the GPU is not decoding. Even though the Snapdragon X Elite chip supports hardware decoding, it's not doing any of the decoding work at all. I imagine once they get that sorted out, we'll probably have you know, a lot better experience video editing on this, but unfortunately that's the one thing I can't really do well on this. So I went through a lot of traveling without being able to edit videos on the go. After tons of back and forth with Microsoft, Snapdragon, and trying to figure it out on my own, turns out the Snapdragon X Elite processor does not support H265 10-bit 422 hardware decoding, which if you're not familiar with what that is, it just allows me to get more data into the videos that I'm recording. So I ended up switching my workflow from 422 to 420 and voila, after weeks of headache, suddenly it was a lot faster at editing videos. Listen, once I sorted out that little issue, that's when it really started becoming fun to use. Now we're talking. I was finally able to unlock the power and convenience of this thing. One of the things that I love is that I can detach the keyboard and use it completely separately, which is really helpful in situations like being on a plane. If you've ever been on a plane, you know how limited space can be, so if you have a tray table, it's kind of hard to fill it all up with a laptop, so I could just put the top of the surface on the tray table and put the keyboard on my lap. It saves me a ton of space and it's super convenient. Battery life is fantastic. I've taken it on multiple trips with me. I've used it all the time and I didn't really have to charge it that often. The only time where battery life really starts to drain quickly is when you're using heavy tasks like DaVinci Resolve and editing videos, or alternatively, you're running apps through emulation, which we'll talk about in a second. 
And of course, one of the reasons why I switched from my iPad was because I was using my iPad to edit photos and editing photos on this is a breeze. But I will say that for some reason, Lightroom on Windows Arm is stupidly slower than the Arm iPad version. But it is much better than when it's running on an Intel or AMD device. So overall, I'm really happy with using this device for all of my needs, but it's not all good either. I'm struggling to understand why Microsoft skimped out on certain things. For example, the OLED display. Although it's bright and beautiful, it has this rainbow effect on it and makes it a little grainy to see during bright screen conditions. It is a high resolution display, but this effect almost makes it feel a little low resolution because you can see the graininess of it. It's a minor detail and only shows up on really bright screens, but it is there. And for some reason, they decided against incorporating the HPD, which is human presence detection. This is a huge plus that the Snapdragon processor offers. It essentially allows you to lock your device anytime you walk away or even look away from your computer and unlock it when you return. But with that said, hey, I guess they can't put everything into the first generation model. Now, since this is a new architecture, you have the inevitable question about app support. And the truth is, I don't really run into apps that don't work, but that doesn't mean you won't. DaVinci Resolve is native, Discord runs under emulation, and even apps like Apple Music that aren't officially supported by the Microsoft Store still work fine when you sideload them and run them through emulation. And yes, I know some of you are gonna wonder about gaming, and as far as gaming is concerned, I'm able to handle light games like Dune Imperium from Steam, Minecraft, and even Grand Theft Auto V. But listen, it's not a gaming device by any means whatsoever, but it can game. Now with that said, some people will not have a good time with these devices. For example, Premiere Pro has been enabled under emulation, but that might be a lot slower for you. And as I mentioned earlier, anything running through emulation is going to drain the battery faster. And some software, like college exam software, just downright don't work at all. Now I'm not in college, so I haven't really been able to test it, but I've seen a lot of reports on this over on Reddit. So just keep that in mind that if you want this device for school, your school software may not even work on this. But I will say app support is getting better and more and more apps are being ported native, but it's just something to be on the lookout for. Personally, I don't really have any issues and I'm really, really happy with the app support thus far. So, four months later, can the Surface Pro 11 replace a full laptop and tablet? Well, for a tablet, definitely. For a laptop, for most people, Yes. Unfortunately for video creators at the moment, there's no Premiere on ARM support. And even then it's not quite as optimized as Apple devices. You can't get the job done though, like I am. And for those with proprietary school software for exams and such that won't run on emulation, also probably not the device for you. But I really do think that for a majority of people, this would actually be an amazing laptop for those who want a tablet and a laptop in one. And here's the truth. This is gonna be my go-to device for now until I find another device that adds on to these features, which in this case would pretty much be all of the following, like better battery life, better screen, more power, and throwing in that human presence detection would be nice too. So yes, I actually do recommend the Surface Pro 11. It's a great device, much better than its predecessors and it's been an absolute joy to use. I love doing videos like this where I walk you through my life with tech. So if you enjoy them, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.